The Real Investment Show. And welcome back to the show this morning. So it's last year, well, actually about two years ago now, um, ESG was really just starting to come about. This, of course, these are these new measures that Wall Street came up with to valuate companies, right? And it's based on their economic and social and governance and environmental impact, et cetera. And of course, ESG became kind of front and center for BlackRock, Larry Fink in particular. And I've, I've written articles. And if you go to our website, uh, realinvestmentadvice.com and type in ESG in the title, you're going to get several articles that we were writing about the the fraud that is ESG. There's no way to value companies based on their social footprint. And there's no way to judge this. Again, if I'm buying a company, right, I want things that I can measure. And I can measure earnings. I can measure profitability. I can measure debt levels. I can measure these things, right? This whole environmental social governance thing can't measure it. And especially when you do things like carbon tax credits where I'm just a polluting behemoth, right? I'm a, I'm a, a dirty coal manufacturing company. And I buy a carbon tax credit from somebody else, like, say, Tesla. Um, and then I basically apply that carbon tax credit. And, and now I'm not polluting and I'm carbon friendly because of these tax credits that I paid for. Now, how is that fixing the environment? Right. It's, it's, compl it's, a, it's a complete sham. And so we talked about this for a while. We've written articles about, it. of course, one of the, the primary benefactors of this was, of course, Larry Fink and BlackRock. And it was interesting because they came out with their whole BlackRock ESG fund, which, you know, ironically, if you look at the top 10 holdings, exactly the same as the S&P 500, with one exception, BlackRock stock was in the top 10 holdings. So every time you bought the BlackRock ESG fund, you were buying an S&P fund. It had exactly the same performance, except you were funneling some additional money into the BlackRock stock, which made Larry Fink richer and made him happy. So, of course, he was championing ESG. They were also charging you four times as much for the exactly, exactly the same performance. There was a 99% correlation between the S&P 500 and the BlackRock ESG fund, but you were paying four times more for the benefit of being able to say you own an ESG fund. But it's, it's, it's ridiculous because trading stocks between individuals, as I've explained before, if I buy a stock, but if I buy Apple shares, you know, in my portfolio, I didn't send money to Apple to buy their shares. Apple didn't issue me new shares in Apple company, right? I bought my shares of Apple from Brent who was selling his shares of Apple. So all I did was give my money to Brent. Brent gave me his shares. Apple doesn't know anything about the transaction. They go. They don't know what goes on. They know all that Apple knows from day to day is the value of their stock price. They have no idea what shares traded hands between who all day long. So this idea that you're investing in companies that are, that are environmentally friendly is ridiculous because you're not. All you're doing is giving money to somebody else that they're going to go spend their money doing whatever they're going to do with it. Has no impact on the company. The company doesn't care. So it wasn't surprising that after a lot of blowback, when people started realizing this, we were just early to the party to, to break this down. About a year after we were writing our articles, other people started figuring out the same thing. Again, it's not hard to get there. And of course... Recently, states have now picked up on the scam that is ESG and have started saying, well, you know what, uh, we're not going to allow our state pensions to invest in these type of funds. Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis, as an example, uh, long, and there's other states that will be heading in this direction, by the way, um, pulled assets out of BlackRock, said that their pension funds won't invest in BlackRock stock or BlackRock funds. That was about $2 billion. Other states have done this already. Uh, if you take a look at kind of a map, there's, there's states that are already taking actions, targeting entities, and boycotting certain industries. 
Actions restricting the use of ESG factors in those states include Louisiana, Missouri, Florida, um, Indiana, Kentucky, quite a few others. And so there's been this pushback. Of course, that means that there's less funds going into this, and that's hurting the bottom line of companies that promote ESG funds. And here's what's interesting. You know, Larry Fink was caught on video, by the way, stating that because they own 10 trillion in assets, that they can affect company decisions. You know, there's been a lot of pushback on companies that have been going woke lately, you know, Bud Light, Nike, Disney, others, and this kind of woke politics that has been invading these, these companies. So instead of the company just doing what's best, Disney, as an example, Pixar, you know, making movies that just making good movies that people want to see. They've been trying to, to push these ideas of this kind of woke agenda into these movies, and they've been failing miserably at the box office, as an example. Well, Larry Fink was caught on tape talking specifically about this, saying, yeah, at BlackRock, because we own so much in assets, we can encourage, or force would be another word for it, company executives to take certain actions that we want because we can affect their compensation because we vote on the board, because we own so much of the stock in these companies. So some of these things that you look at and go, why are these companies doing this? Why would Target do this and then, you know, lose $15 billion in market cap over these decisions? Well, it's because it's coming from their outside investors that have a real influence on, on their corporate board decisions, how they get compensated, et cetera. So, you know, uh, in a lot of cases, BlackRock owns such a heavy weight, and this was Larry Fink's conversation, they, own such a, they have such a heavy position in some of these companies because, again, they own $10 trillion worth of assets. It's got to get invested somewhere. So a lot of cases, these funds own such a big position in companies, they can go, you know what, if you don't do it the way we want to do it, we're going to vote against your stock option compensation and we're going to vote against your, you know, your salary increase, et cetera. So companies go, okay, well, <clears throat> you know, I'll go along with you. And that's why, so if you've been scratching your head going, I don't understand why companies are doing this because it's killing their bottom line, doesn't matter. But it was interesting because last month, 17 Republican state attorneys filed a motion with the Federal Energy, Energy Regulatory Commission to dispute whether BlackRock could purchase more than 10 million voting stakes in utility companies. See, this is the point. Just last week, uh, Larry Fink was at uh, a convention, or a not a convention, sorry, an investment conference, and he made the statement that, he says, when I write these investment letters, it was never meant to be a political statement. They were written to identify long-term issues to our long-term investors, and that's not really the case. He was very adamant at BlackRock. Go, I mean, all he did was run around BlackRock talk, promoting ESG within the whole company and then pushing these ideas on to companies they had investments in. So whether or not you want to say it was a political move or not, your actions do not or your actions actually betrayed your, your conversation because you were being politically motivated. You were pushing a political agenda on these companies, and it shows up in their actions, which have now affected their stock prices in many cases. So it's going to be interesting to watch now. Um, as we've talked about before, you know, we're, we're buying, you know people are, are making a decision to boycott companies like Target, like Disney, like Nike, like Bud, uh, Anheuser-Busch over things that they have done politically, right? And so in terms of this kind of this woke attitude, but you're targeting the wrong company. If you really want to change dynamics, you, 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 uh, you boycott the companies that invest in these companies like BlackRock. So don't own any BlackRock mutual funds. Pull your investments from BlackRock. Pull your, pull, and if you've got BlackRock in your 401k plan, swap it to 
a Spider S&P 500 index rather than a BlackRock fund. Take your money out of those funds because that's where you hurt the decision maker, which are these guys that have enough voting block to make companies change their views. So all of a sudden, if you put enough pressure on BlackRock, if you withdraw enough assets out of BlackRock, it will start changing their view about what they do with companies. And instead of them pushing an agenda on companies, they'll say, you know what we want? We want you to make better movies. We want you to do the right thing, cater to your base. We want you to start getting sales up. We need to see better growth in your company because that's what you want as well. So it's just kind of interesting now that this, is, this worm has started to turn because we were writing about this two years ago. And so it's now it's interesting to see that this is finally starting to come around and the impact has finally started to hit the people that matter, which are people like Larry Fink, who I've <clears throat> previously termed Darth Vader, um, and making him now back out of this decision because he's now going to no longer be talking about ESG anymore because in his view, it's become highly politicized. In reality, he just got his hand caught in the cookie jar. Be right back after the break. Investment Advice blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com. 